Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. One of the more common terms you'll hear tossed about the Flat Earth community is the Dunning-Kruger effect. Rather than pontificate on what this means to me or, or another non-expert, let's get somebody who's a specialist in the field to talk to us about it. Let's have Dr. Todd Grande come in and weigh in on this matter. So let's cue up the music and see what Dr. Grande has to say. This is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the Dunning-Kruger effect? The Dunning-Kruger effect is based on research conducted by two researchers, Dunning and Kruger, and it's about how individuals that are incompetent at certain tasks tend to overestimate how they performed on those tasks. Now there's a little more to it than that, but that's generally what the theory says. And sometimes we hear about the Dunning-Kruger effect we link it to personality traits like narcissism or something like that. But really, the Dunning-Kruger effect doesn't really have much to do with personality traits. It's an effect of being incompetent itself. And many people, of course, are competent in some areas. They're in the mid-range in other areas and incompetent in some areas. So the Dunning-Kruger effect really has the potential to affect almost everybody. So in the research that Dunning and Kruger did, as well as subsequent research, sometimes individuals are divided into four categories in terms of confidence based on quartiles. For this description, I'm just going to use three categories. Individuals that are incompetent, individuals in the mid-range, so those toward the middle of the bell curve, and people that are experts, just those three categories. So. First of all, this concept that Dunning and Kruger developed is called illusory superiority. And let's first look at it as it applies to people that are incompetent at a particular task. People in this category tend to overestimate their ability. And again, they don't do so because of any particular personality trait, but rather because they lack the knowledge to understand how poorly they performed at a particular task. Now, it's interesting that this is across many areas. This isn't just a specific type of task. When we look at the Dunning-Kruger research as well as other research, we see tasks like grammar ability, driving skill, humor, finance, logic, the ability to play chess, firearm safety, as well as debating skill and social abilities. So this affects a lot of areas, not just limited to particular reasoning tasks or something like that. It's a number of different areas that are affected. So I covered the category of people that are incompetent at a particular task. What about those in the mid-range, those toward the middle of the bell curve? Well, they tend to overestimate their ability as well. Their overestimation isn't as extreme as those who are incompetent at a particular skill, but there's still a marked overestimation. For the individuals who are incompetent and those in the mid-range, for both groups, no matter where they are in terms of actual skill, they tend to rate themselves above average. It's believed that maybe the effect isn't as strong in the mid-range because those individuals have more knowledge and they might be able to use that knowledge to gain awareness of what they don't do well. So they might have more knowledge of their potential incompetence. That's why their estimation of their ability is a little bit closer to their actual performance. Now, the third category deals with experts. So these are people that are highly competent. Now, the effect where the overestimation occurs isn't present for individuals in this category. Actually, it goes the other way. Individuals that are highly competent, that are experts, tend to underestimate their performance. They believe their performance was not as high as it really was. Now, if we look at the reasons around the people that are incompetent or in mid-range competence, their reasons for overestimating, and we look at the experts' reasons for underestimating, it's totally different. It's not about a lack of knowledge to figure out that there's incompetence for people that are experts. It's rather that they overestimate 
other people's performance on the same test. So they believe that because they did well on the test, that other people must have done well on the test as well. This is what causes the underestimation of the abilities. So if we think about incompetence and estimation as two distinct concepts when we look at their relationship, there's only a few points where they intersect, where someone's actual competence, the abilities demonstrated on a test, match how they estimate that they did. In those with lower competence, there's overestimation, and with higher competence, there's underestimation. So is there anything that can be done about this? Are people that are incompetent at tasks always going to overestimate, and experts always going to underestimate? Well, actually, it does seem like it can be corrected. The research shows that individuals who overestimate their ability, who are incompetent and overestimate their ability, later on when they're taught how to perform the task correctly, are willing to go back and revise their self-evaluation and their revision is much more accurate. Interestingly, when experts see the other scores of participants who take these tests, they're also willing to revise their original self-evaluation and rather than underestimate themselves, to put themselves more accurately in terms of their performance on that task. So both groups, those who are incompetent and those that are highly competent, when they learn more, are willing to correct the self-evaluations. I hope you found this description of the Dunning-Kruger effect to be interesting. Thanks for watching.